Everything you need to win this week in breaking down the matchups, talking about last night's game, looking at some of these injury reports, and getting you primed for the upcoming fantasy football weekend. Do not miss a minute. Make sure you like and subscribe. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome into a Friday edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. A little impromptu two man show. Yeah. We we thought Mike was driving in this morning. That was the plan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He had uh, a puppy emergency. And um, turns out dogs do really dumb things that hurt themselves quite often. We were talking about this. Uh, th- this is uh, – I've had what has happened to his dog happen to two different dogs where if you don't intervene, they'll die. Yeah, so they kind of a a sudden emergency. So he and his wife are taking care of that. The news to pass along there is the dog's going to yes. be okay, but needs surgery. And yep. So that was uh, you know, the sudden news. Now, if he had been the one getting the wheel of shame, I would have yeah, I would have taken it as a Sean McVay style lie. I don't think I would have let him take care of the dog. Oh, I would have yeah, been like, sorry, yeah. uh, you you got shamed. Uh, is but that what would have come up on the wheel? <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. All right. Get better, Rufus. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have matchups to get into. Thursday night football to recap. A decent game. Thursday night football, I feel like more often than not, is mostly trash. The game turned out okay after having a first half that was just an unwatchable offense from the Saints. Derek Carr took first place in my players yeah, I that do. I don't want to watch. Uh, rankings that oh, I've been keeping. I almost texted you last night yeah. to see if he moved up that He did. List. He did. He was pushing for the title. Also, when did he become such a whiny jerk? Like, Aaron Rodgers, I couldn't stand watching Aaron Rodgers for years. You know, he, he was in Green Bay, and after every mistake, he's just got the whiniest, it's not my fault face. He's upset with everyone. And then he changes teams, and all of a sudden, Cool, good guy, awesome teammate. I'm not mad at nobody. Derek Carr did the opposite. He was like Mr. Nice. He switches over to the Saints, and now it's like, I hate you. <laughs> well, they you can be more ornery when your groin hurts, which seemed yeah. to be a problem for him. Mm-hmm. Also, I watched a couple highlights. Like uh, Chris Olave had 15 targets. He only caught seven of them. He really didn't have that good of a fantasy day. He really gave up on a few routes. Like I... I was watching the highlights, and I don't know if he's not feeling it. I don't know if they're not on the same page. Like one of the times, oh, I know what it was. One of the times that Carr was yelling was yelling at Olave because you know Carr had thrown the ball 15 yards out of bounds, and it was somehow it was Olave's fault. But I did watch that route, and like Olave stopped running. 100. percent So there were two plays. One Alvin Kamara on a hot route didn't stop and turn around it was not Derek Carr's fault, and that Olave play was. Both cars, but not cars fault. Like yes, Olave stopped yes. on the route, but there were about seven hundred times where he was like, "No, ah. angry." Yeah, I know. He's he was uh, he's ornery. Yeah, um, but I think the main storyline of the game. Well, bad. there there's a bunch. I yeah. mean, one is Alvin Kamara is catching a, a over a million passes per week, and and this is why I said he's locked into DFS lineups on Sunday until unless he can't be. Yeah, I think he is really, really bad for the Saints. Like, th- this isn't I, – I, the, the the announcer on the, the program made a really good point, and I was so happy that he said this. This isn't Derek Carr going hitch, 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 you know, looking first read, second read, third read, nothing's there, let me check it down. This is Carr dropping back, looking at his first read, let me throw it to Alvin Kamara. He is a crutch that is hurting the offense. 100%. I mean, it's, it's like it's, if you didn't have a first gear on a car, you'd have to at least drive a little bit faster. Yeah, I mean, Alvin Kamara is fantastic, but 
Derek, there's other players on your team, man. So Olave ended up seven for fifty seven, no touchdown on fifteen targets. That was that's a bad game. Mm -hmm. That's a bad game. Taysom Hill, he had a good game because he got into the end zone and caught four passes. Michael Thomas's game, we said he's good for fifty yards. He was good for forty two in this one, but got into the end zone. So uh Jason, you got a late game uh treat. Against with, Mike, yes. And I had the opposite. I, I once again I was, I was dipping in. I was checking this game, but I was facing Christian Kirk, and things were going real nice. Because mm -hmm. you weren't watching. I wasn't watching the possessions by Jacksonville. <laughs> oh, are you serious? When they had the ball, you I, leave? I would dip in and out. I, oh. you know, We had some family stuff we were dealing with as well. But I did tune in with three minutes left, and Christian Kirk had a uh, just an ankle-breaking uh, run. After the catch and, and a big touchdown, 44-yarder. The big storyline on that side of the ball, though, I mean, Travis Etienne, we already know he's great, and he was great again. Mm -hmm. Christian Kirk's been good. We said play him. But Calvin Ridley is the problem here. Calvin Ridley is the elephant in the room because you had a game in which, you know, there were 29 pass attempts. Only four of them went to Calvin Ridley. He had one catch for five yards, and now – now I'm questioning our confidence levels on Calvin Ridley because you look at the season and are, are we sitting there are we sitting there with this level of inconsistency wondering what you really have Yeah I I think you you have to start second guessing it um at at this point he's been so inconsistent it's basically like a third of his games are relevant that being said a lot of wide receivers you you deal with that you deal with you know the ups and downs and you've got to keep them in your lineup in order to get the big plays the uh, problem is is what you decide Ridley is in your brain because if you go into the season and you say this is a a must start type of player like if you just transpose his numbers onto Jamar Chase mm -hmm. you always play him if, if you it, transpose him onto Gabe Davis you go Huh. Right. Like, you know, 76, 67, 59. He had a he had a, Those are the wide receiver finishes. Those are the wide receiver finishes. He had he had another game where he was two he had two catches, but one of them was a touchdown, so he saves it and then he's had two really good games. So, I don't know. It it just um I don't think he's in the you have to start him category uh, anymore. I would agree with that. You you got to you got to adapt and stay water and and change your opinions speaking of changing your opinions based on new information uh Taysom Hill I don't know if you noticed this last week Taysom Hill had eight targets we have joked about how Taysom Hill shouldn't be a tight end he doesn't play tight end he doesn't catch the ball he, he heard you he has 21 receptions over the previous three years wow like he does not catch the ball and now he had seven receptions last week four this week and was used as a receiver, uh, almost 100 yards between the two weeks. So. And five rush attempts and a goal line carry, which he will get chances to do. Yeah. If he's actually going to be a decent tight end. Absolutely. If he's going to be on the field, you know, 60% of the time plus being used, running routes, getting carries. Um, 42 routes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fantastic. He, he should be a uh, an important tight end pickup uh, on waiver day. Okay. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Congratulations to Nurse Nicholas, who wins a $100 gift card from fantasychamps.com. We give $100 away every Friday to a supporter of the Foot Clan or of the show, mm -hmm. who we call the Foot Clan. And we love nurses. Yeah, uh, Jointhefoot.com is where you go and do that. And I've had this question this week. Like, everybody that supports over there is entered to win. So, congratulations, Nurse Nicholas, $100 heading your way. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Bears running back Roshan Johnson missed practice again. Uh -oh. Yeah, that makes it seem like he is not going to clear the concussion protocol. Technically, he still has time, but usually what you see when people clear is them return to a limited practice before they're out of protocol. That hasn't happened yet. We'll stay tuned for today. But this is also a little bit longer of a timeline 
because when he got this was on a Thursday night football game the week prior. So, I mean, I, I assume at this point it's going to be Deonta Foreman and no Roshan. We have a report from Mary Kay Cavett that says Deshaun Watson, who returned to practice, looks like a go in week seven against the Colts. Yeah, well, I mean, the matchup isn't bad. And he's yeah, is he a go for fantasy? Um, yeah, this week, I, I, I mean, it's tough to play someone right off of an injury. We we've, we've seen that, but in a week like this one, where the streaming options are not very good. Thoughts on Pat Fryermuth? <sighs> Got news this morning that he re-injured his hamstring and will not play this week, and light likely sidelined. Longer after aggravating. Yeah, I mean, that that would be the issue with uh, players coming back from an injury. But it really stinks. The matchup was so good. He is obviously no longer my start of the week. Do you want to uh, do a uh, pivot to who your OG was going to be? Sure, Luke Musgrave. Much better Who you option. just signed in our League of Records. Yes, I did. But you want to know why? Because I no longer have a tight end because the one I spent money on went down to injury. I lose Musgrave everyone. must start? Uh, absolutely not. I look, man, I am starting Luke Musgrave, so he will be injured. Uh, uh, you know, please send early regards to him and his family. Yes. Uh, we have Daniel Jones limited to individual drills, not yet cleared for contact. I think we're getting uh, yeah, Tyrod. This will be another week of Tyrod. I'm I'm almost certain of that. We had. Seahawks that didn't practice on Thursday. DK Metcalf with the ribs and hip. Zach Charbonnet with the hamstring. And I'm going to throw it in there. Tyler Lockett was uh, limited a couple days in a row as well. I do suspect this could be a JSN week. I, if you start to look at what has transpired, uh, average depth of target has increased every game. Snaps were, the, were going up. Mm -hmm. And... I listened to the comments from Pete Carroll, and Pete Carroll said, look, uh, any judgment thus far is inappropriate. You know, he, he reminded me and everyone else that Jason just got the cast off his hand. Right. Which, in one regard, kept him off the field because he couldn't capably block the way they wanted him to block. So they expect big things. If Metcalf misses, there will be opportunity. It's Arizona. I like him to I, maybe have his first breakout game. Yeah, I don't think DK Metcalf is going to miss this week. If you look at last week, he missed the Wednesday practice, missed the Thursday practice, just like this week. Same injuries. These aren't new. The new one is uh, Charbonnet. Charbonnet with his hamstring, full did not participate in practice and a brand new injury. So I would expect he is out, which means in this matchup, favored by a touchdown at home, not that you – needed any more motivation but ken walker is just going to go bonkers that's good i i have to I have we to both have them you i know. have to square off against him this yeah. week so oh no i know you you thought we were talking about the fantasy face off yeah you don't have him huh uh Devontae smith expects to play sunday evening against the dolphins that's good no news. changes don't change your lineup well, I, I, I don't need to change my lineup oh this is good news with Devontae smith also, did you see I sent you a little trade offer this morning? I did not. In our League of Records? I did not. It's a real good one. You're going to love it. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com <laughs> slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yeah, I am not. You, are you taking it? No, I'm not taking it. I am counter. Are you going to share? Um, yeah, so you offered me, uh, Rushy Rice, a player I really like, a player I was, I, I was high on coming into the season, mm -hmm. player I had. Oops. That I accidentally dropped and now you got him and you Oops, are- Oops, all mine. Try, <laughs> trying to, uh, rub it in. It well is, done. um, you know, there, there's been a lot of trades in all of our leagues and hopefully in yours as well and, and people maneuvering for the bye weeks, maneuvering on the buy low front, right? Like, I feel like- this is the right time of year, week five, six, seven, where like, you, it's the buy low window. It's a sell high window. Um, I made a trade in League of Record yesterday where you, you, you went as far as to text me. Now, yeah. you know, we're normally in the Slack channel, but when you really want to get a message across, it was important. 
You texted me and I was uh, very angry with you because, in my opinion, you know, I, I, I've said this on the show. I think Devonte Adams, a great buy low candidate right now, off the 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 two week bad stretch. Uh, Saquon Barkley, also a pretty good buy low candidate. You know, when when you miss games, your 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 managers of those players have figured out how to live life without you, and it's easier to let. That's go a good of point. Them. And yeah, you texted, I hate you. Mm-hmm. I freaking hate you. Mm -hmm. How did you get that deal done? And the deal was, for the record, in our league, I traded injured Kyron Williams. Mm -hmm. Who I think is going to miss a three, three weeks. good chunk three of time. Three or four weeks, yeah. yeah. And then I traded Damian Pierce. Which is a player who is on the way out of relevance with uh, Devin Singletary overcoming him. And the unfair advantage that is Travis Kelsey. I sent him. Yeah, I, sent that, him I mean, you sent Travis Kelsey – an injured guy and a worthless guy, and you got back a bunch of stars: Devonte Adams, Saquon Barkley, um, and Dallas Goddard to replace Kelsey. So yeah. you did not like it. I didn't. Yeah, and I liked that you didn't like it because we are rivals. We are Raiders, Bears. We covered that yesterday. The Browns, Colts, as well. Bills, Patriots, Commanders, Giants, Falcons, Buccaneers. Those were all on yesterday's show, and all the games we discussed yesterday totals of forty-one or lower. All of today's games have totals of 43 or higher. Now, we go in order of the games, which means let's get to Sunday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's start with the – I mean, this is a fun game. Detroit 5-1, and one, Baltimore 4-2. and two. DraftKings Sportsbook line is Baltimore minus 3. The over-under is 43. Now, you – did you just recoil? Yeah. I'm, you surprised? I'm, I am surprised that the line is Baltimore minus 3. The Lions have – really been outstanding now this is going to be quite a test right a, a road game for golf against a really good defense i will be shocked and impressed if the lines win this game i i am definitely on the baltimore side of it it is a challenge like you said both teams great defenses the detroit rush defense is number one against running backs the baltimore pass defense you know, they're averaging four sacks a game, which is number one in the league, second in yards per game allowed. Like, it is – and, and it's not golf at home, right? It's not going to be a comfortable situation for him. And he's been really good. So I guess I'm curious how you will see – like, so far the motor that keeps the Lions moving has been, in part, the running game with David Montgomery. He will be out. Craig Reynolds did return to practice. But they're getting Jameer Gibbs back, and and Dan Campbell came out this morning said he said they need him to take the load in Week Seven. Uh, he said I'd like to say we're going to be careful with him, but the reality is we need him. Yeah, and and we've seen this play out before, uh, where you didn't have David Montgomery and you did have Jameer Gibbs. That was back in Week Three, and Jameer Gibbs got 17 carries in that game, and he ran well, 80 yards on him. It, it wasn't a fantastic fantasy finish game. But uh, the opportunities were were there for him, and I think he gets at least 15 opportunities in this game. Uh, where you beat the Ravens' defense so far has been in the running game. Running backs have done all right, and they've shut everyone else down. So they're going to need him. That is the strength of this team with their offensive line. I am 100% playing Jameer Gibbs. If there's any question of, like, I've got Gibbs, and you know he's first game back from an injury, I, he's going to be in my lineup. I like hearing that. I am still afraid of surprises. I mean, Dan it, Campbell once told us a story about DeAndre Swift and the need to use him and to unleash him. And I, I, mean, I consider me terrified, but hopeful. Yeah, I mean, Craig Reynolds dealing with two different injuries. They, they, when he says they need him, it's not, it's not like him just giving a pep talk, saying like, "Ah, we really need this guy." He's, it's actually like, "Oh my gosh, we need him." Because we don't have other options. So um, is Craig Reynolds, if he practices uh, today in full, is he in play at all? When you say that you can beat them on the ground, he is in play like Latavius Murray is in play. Okay, you're going to hope for a touchdown and an emergency double flex situation. In general, I don't want to play those guys. Amon Ra, despite the tough matchup, of course you're playing him for sure. Jared Goff, we have a popular start-sit question on the website, Jared Goff or Matthew Stafford. Now, our our rankings on that one have 
our consensus rankings have Stafford slightly ahead in projected points. And uh, is that the vibe you're getting here? I mean, they, they're favorites against Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. I, I, I lean Matthew Stafford in part because of the Kyron injury. Um, the The likelihood of passing touchdowns versus rushing touchdowns, like that's been Stafford's problem this year is Kyron's been – getting rushing touchdowns. And with him out of the way, I, I think the play calls will rely more on Stafford's arm in the red zone. And so he's looked good. The matchup against Pittsburgh is actually really plus. I'll, I'll lean Stafford there. The matchup's bad for Sam Laporta, but last week we dealt with his injury and he came right back to 11 targets and seemed okay. So um, if he's out there, you're going to be playing him regardless of the matchup. One more uh, Jameer Gibbs question. Let's throw this out there for the – Flex consideration, because I think a lot of people at this point, that's where Gibbs is locked into lineups. Jordan Addison. Hmm. Jordan Addison or Jameer Gibbs? Addison plays San Francisco on Monday Night Football. Gibbs, I think I'm on the Gibbs side of that one. I'm on the Gibbs side there. Yeah, and as our uh, consensus rankings have him significantly higher than Addison right now. On the other side of the ball, I don't have a lot of confidence in the running game. I know like the Lions are the best in, in football. Mm -hmm. So to be potentially productive against them, you normally need one guy in the backfield, not three. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Lions right now are giving up 10 fantasy points per game to the running back position, not to like the number one running back in totality. If you're going to have Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and Melvin Gordon splitting up 10 fantasy points, I mean, no thank you. I saw the – what do you think – the line is for rushing yardage for Gus Edwards because that is something I may have thrown a few bones on this week. I think the rushing line is 33 and a half. It's 44. Yeah, I'll take the under on that. That's bet. what I did as well. So um, that's always a fun way to do it, by the way, is I like having someone guess the line here in the office before we go to it because sometimes we're really shocked. Lamar Jackson, he is a top 10. He's been a top 10 quarterback in four of six starts. Uh, you're going to play him. Zay Flowers? Yeah, you can play Zay Flowers at home in this matchup. Yeah, for sure. The The Lions have an elite, may, maybe the best rushing defense out there, but they are beatable in the air, um, especially to tight ends. So uh, I think that's very helpful for Lamar Jackson and Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews in games played this year, if you project it over the season, he's averaging he's, – he's on pace for 80 receptions, 1,000 yards, and 10 touchdowns. So He's, he's having a really good, uh, a really good season. It, it's so funny when you miss week one what that does for your perception. He's, he's been great. All right. Uh, quick break. Back with uh, another matchup. Well, Jason, the Pittsburgh Steelers, mm -hmm. the three and two Pittsburgh Steelers. That mind blowing. The super obviously great Pittsburgh Steelers offense taking on the Los Angeles Rams, who are three and three in Los Angeles. The line here, the DK Sportsbook line, Los Angeles minus three. The over under is forty three and a half. And um, you know the aforementioned Matthew Stafford, he. Throws the ball a ton and yet has not finished one week higher than the quarterback 14. Yeah, it's what I just said. He he has not been throwing touchdowns uh, very much. That's that's his main issue right now. Only one single game the entire season where he's had multiple touchdown passes. Oh. Andy's almost upset of the week. Here's the problem for Matthew Stafford. Like, I, I like the train of thought that, okay, well, we won't have Kyron, so maybe he'll throw some touchdowns. The problem is, is last week against Arizona, they essentially didn't have Kyron in the first half. And that led to ineptitude on the offensive side of the football for the Los Angeles Rams, which we have seen in spurts. If they cannot move the ball on the ground at all, it's going to be wheels up for this uh, pass rush. And I think it's going to be a problem for the Rams. And so uh, I don't have confidence in the Evans, Freeman, Gaskin, Henderson ensemble. Mm -mm. I don't want to play any of them. No. I know a lot of people are throwing Zach. I mean, Zach Evans, I'll tell you right now, 
DFS, he's 4,000. Not in my lineup. Yep, not in mine. You know, to start the week he was, the first day of the week, but not anymore. And and there are so many Zach Evans questions in our start-sit tool. So I, I got to run through these. Kareem Hunt, Zach Evans. I'm going to go Kareem Hunt. Zach Moss, Zach Evans. The Zach versus Zach. I'm going to go Zach. Moss. I'm just going Zach. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, In that one, man, Cleveland's such a bad matchup. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm, I'm gonna take the, I'm taking Zach Moss's I'm pass take catching. Okay, you, you win Evans, Jaleel McLaughlin or Zach Evans, McLaughlin. All right, Deonta Foreman, Foreman for sure. So I mean, I think we're saying unless you have a obvious, you know, unless Evans is obviously better than your option, we're we're kind of leaning away from from that trust. And and look, new information. We'll change our opinions if we get something out of today's yeah, practice. I've I've been on Twitter looking for any kind of update from practice reports as to – Have you texted Cindy <laughs> or uh, I, Susan? I haven't because I don't want their answers. Andy. Yeah, that will be. They're filthy, filthy liars. I bet if you texted both his mom and grandma, you get, you get two different answers. 100%. Yeah. And you know, you know what we need? We just need a third – family member to give us one more answer because then their answers will be it's Royce Freeman it's Miles Gaskin it's Daryl Henderson yeah. and then I will know it's the one guy not mentioned that's okay all right well we'll we'll look into it Cooper Cup of course mm -hmm. Puka Nakua Jason start of the week yep 33 percent still of targets. a little nervous but the matchup is so delicious right now you got to do it yes you got to do it adjusting for schedule Steelers are Dead last um, in fantasy points given up to wide receivers. 38 points a week. I mean, yes, please. That's And it's split up basically just between Cooper Cup and Puka. And the uh, yes, please uh, is not something we've generally seen on the Pittsburgh side of the football. I mean, Kenny Pickett, no. Najee Harris, I, no thank you. I mean, the Rams' defense on the year is second against running backs when you look at schedule adjusted. You weren't here for this, Andy. Um, I've got a question for you. So Najee Harris has been very inefficient, right? Behind this offensive line, yada, yada, he's running sub four. He's at uh, 3.9 yards per carry. Without looking, what is Jalen Warren's yards per carry? What did you say Najee's was? 3.9. It's probably not much different. It's probably like, probably like 3.9. It's 3.9. Six. Yeah, he's he's it's the passing game for Warren. Yes, that you're right. Yeah, but I'll, that just it blew Mike and I's mind when we were looking that's at this. That's fair. Yesterday. Yeah, that's um. I mean, I kind of knew you were setting me up. If right. you had, if I was blind into that, I probably would have said over four. So, um, I am not starting. I would not start Najee over Warren. I would not start either player this week. There you uh, go. I mean, I I the the Rams have a good defense. It's on the road. Uh, despite your almost upset, they are underdogs. Just doesn't project well. If I have to start one of them, I would start Jalen Warren because of the passing work. Pickens and Deontay. Yeah, Deontay is back uh, practicing in full. Um, he had a lot of time off with the IR stint for the hamstring. I think he's, you know, in a full PPR. He's okay. I mean, really, I I, I really wanted Pat Fryermuth because that's where you beat the Rams. Um, I don't, you know, George Pickens has been very, very good. It kind of seems like he should have earned his way to be locked into a weekly flex, but this was all without Deontay Johnson. So now it's like, I feel like I want a game to wait and see is Deontay Johnson go back to just being, you know, the primary first read target, the more targeted player Does that take away from Pickens. I, I, I don't want to start any, any Steelers here. Last week, the Rams did shut down. I mean, the air yards were there, but the production wasn't for Hollywood on right. those deep throws. So, uh, the Cardinals are one and five. They take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are three and two. <sighs> yeah, I mean, the NFL surprises sometimes, but this is not a game I'm projecting surprise. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus seven and a half. The over-under is 44 and a half. Could be the last game for Josh Dobbs as the starter of the Arizona Cardinals. No James Conner, so it's going to be Keontae Ingram, Damian Williams, Amari DiMarcato. No thank you. 
Yeah, you're not starting any of those players. Um, they're, one, not good. Two, they're splitting. No one has the workload to themselves. Um, and you're underdogs in this game. So, no thank you. What are we doing with Hollywood, though? I mean, Hollywood's targets have been through the roof. and uh... Yeah, Hollywood is a fantastic, fantastic play. He's your start of the week. Um, you know, you, you just look at his target numbers. Uh, since week two, 10, 7, 10, 10, 11. That's bankable. Um, we talked about him being a great trade for target. Um, last week, the air yards were there, just didn't connect. And so I'm I am happy to play Hollywood. I can't imagine um, not playing, not yeah. playing him. Yeah, I'm going to just keep your eyes on Michael Wilson and Trey McBride this week because they were tied for the second in targets last week. Just don't play him. Just look at him yeah. on the screen. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith's your start of the week at quarterback facing Arizona, an Arizona defense that is 29th in fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. And Kenneth Walker's facing the 30th ranked running defense with probably no Zach Charbonnet. Yeah, I mean, he had 76% of the snaps, 22 opportunities out of the bye. Kenneth Walker is uh, the, the best play. Um, and don't you dare, don't you dare, I see you doing it. You're doing it, aren't you? Am I'm, I right? No, I'm not changing anything. You're no, not changing no, your draft I, I legitimately line. just wanted to know what the price was for okay. Kenneth Walker. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't know. Uh, uh, I, I think he will be a smash success this week. There you go. Um, Geno Smith, he was my start of the week because this is a really rough week for streaming options. Um, you, you really do have to hope that the touchdowns come early for Geno because if they come early for Kenneth Walker, they're going to come late for Kenneth Walker as well, and he will dominate. So this is a situation where hopefully Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, they get it going early to get a good lead. Tyler Lockett has just crushed the Cardinals. The last six games, he's averaged a touchdown a game, 94 yards, six receptions. Uh, you know, you're, you're always going to start Lockett and Metcalf and Walker, so you just move on. And like I said, I do think JSN is going to have a maybe the best week of the season. I do. You don't agree. Uh, I, I, I'm just trying. I'm just sniffing around for your DraftKings lineup. Sometimes you say things you you prop up under, uh, you know, under the radar guys a lot, and then they end up in your lineup. I mean, the, at least the logic checks right. out. No, there, no, no, right? no. It yeah, makes I mean, complete a, sense. It is a reason to do it. Yes, it's putting your money where your mouth is. Yeah. I totally get that. I'm just trying to. Yeah, I mean, you could be wrong. Just want to know. Could be right. Don't know. Green Bay two and three. Broncos one and five. DraftKings Sportsbook line Green Bay minus one. The over under is forty five. This Denver defense. Don't think you can call them that. This Denver not offense. There you go. Uh gets to take on Jordan Love. Jordan Love is uh you know what his rank is in completion percentage out of thirty five players that have uh complete attempted at least 50 passes there's 35 of them 35 i'm of gonna them. guess 36 no he's not below but he is 35 out of 35 okay completing just uh 55! just about half his passes cool. he does lead the nfl in average depth of target which is kind of making up for it and that's something where you know like cj stroud for example we've been impressed with him mm -hmm. cj stroud is 32 out of 35 in that number so completion percentage is a rookie not everything you just want to see him make some big plays. And he has been a top 12 quarterback in three or five weeks, and the matchup is juicy. Yeah, big plays are what the Broncos have been giving up all season. This is, to me, a great spot for uh, – if Aaron Jones doesn't get re-injured in this game, like that is the fear. If if Aaron Jones is healthy, just what a great play. But Christian Watson is the guy, to me, when I look at the matchups against the Broncos and how they've been beaten, it's just these speedy guys that the defenders – just give up on and I feel like Christian Watson is prime for a 40 plus yard touchdown this week okay where are you at with Romeo Dobbs um I I like Romeo Dobbs he's a I mean there's a plus matchup for everyone um and he has been getting great target share he's always on the field he's usually now last the last game one. was a pretty huge disappointment one one catch for four yards in a matchup against the Raiders yes last last time we saw them uh Dobbs was absolutely terrible but we have to always remember wide receivers that aren't one of the top five wide receivers in the league they all have down games and when you when you only look at whatever happened last game 
and you're like, oh, he just had a bad game. That's the new normal, and then you don't play him. Well, you they, just never get. No, I, I understand the principle, but you also have Aaron Jones returning. You have Christian Watson snap counts going up. You have a, a couple of uh, factors that weren't there. You know, we still see Jaden Reed on the on the field. So mm -hmm. I think uh, at times we look at it and we say, mm, is this a trend that's going to begin or not? Uh, like, would you play Sutton, who scored four times on the other side of the football? That you know, it doesn't seem like Sutton is. Like Judy could be heading out, but Sutton might be sticking around. And um, I, I would rather play Romeo Dobbs than, okay. than Sutton. And, uh, you know, I mentioned it, Aaron Jones. He's my start of the week. I think you have to get him into your lineup against this 32nd-ranked run defense. I know it's going to be nerve-wracking, but he is he's not the kind of player that needs 30 opportunities, 25 opportunities. He he, he is a player that, in this situation, you, you could get him – 12, 15 opportunities, and that could be enough for fantasy. A lot of questions about the Denver backfield. Mm -hmm. Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin. I thought I saw Jaleel McLaughlin hit waiver wires this week. That is a mistake. That is a mistake, in my opinion, because he is completely replacing the completely career over Samaj P. Ryan. I mean, Samaj has looked bad all year. Um, this last week, he played 17% of the snaps and received exactly zero rushing attempts. So, like, McLaughlin played his way into relevance. The Packers have not been good stopping the run. So, I, you know, we've talked about so many backfields where it's like, I don't want to play anyone from there. And, like, I would rather play McLaughlin than the, than the Steelers running backs. Either one. Yeah. Judy, still uh, on your bench. Russell Wilson was Mike's start of the week on yesterday's show. He's not mine. He is not mine either. Uh, I don't really understand that one. Maybe he's got a magic book that says the future that was brought to him in the past by Marty McFly. Maybe he didn't want to show up today for this conversation. Yeah. Luke Musgrave is one of eight, touch, uh, one, eight touchdowns. He's one of eight touchdowns, Jason. Yeah. It's one of eight tight ends with 20-plus percent of teams' receptions, so he is a, a plus matchup this week. I still, you know, it's it's like Mayer. It's like Mayer this week. Both guys I see very similarly, which is young, talented. If it's their week, you'll be happy. If it's not their week, I won't be surprised. Yeah, yeah, it makes, makes complete sense. I think if you have to start one, I would rather start Musgrave. If you want to hold one in hopes that they become something more integral to the offense, then that would be Mayer. The Chargers are two and three. The Chiefs are five and one. Chiefs are at home at Arrowhead, and the DraftKings Sportsbook line has them as five and a half point favorites. The over under is forty eight in this one, bet down from fifty and a half, which is where it started. Hmm. And I can see that. I can see this. Um, like the Chiefs' defense has been a problem for fantasy managers and opponents. Yeah, I mean, and for Mahomes, uh, in the sense that their their defense has kept their games much lower scoring than usual. I mean, we are hopeful for a barn burner here because if you look, since Justin Herbert has entered the league, these matchups that they played, you know, twice uh, a year average 54 points per game. So the, you know, the line going down to 48 from 50 and a half is, I think, respect for the Kansas City Chiefs defense and maybe fear of the Chargers offense without Mike Williams. I want to spend the time in this game because it's got a high over-under. Like you said, the history has been great. Like Mahomes, Herbert, Kelsey, and Keenan, those guys are in. And Austin Eckler, you're playing. And Isaiah Pacheco, you're playing. He's yep. getting a ton of opportunities. Mike mentioned 20 a game, and he's the start of the week. But I want to spend the time on the, on the two kind of uh, dart throw upside peripheral wide receivers joshua palmer and rushy rice that's exactly right joshua palmer is seven targets eight targets seven targets uh huge huge is not getting any work and so palmer really is next man up yes um palmer in the games that mike williams missed last year um was pretty good but he was never great and so i, I think that's what palmer is he is definitely a player that you can start i don't think you're going to get a goose in this matchup um you know, maybe you you're hoping for a touchdown, but I don't think you get that. I I think his line at the end of the game is going to be five for sixty nine. 
Well, let me let me ask you this. When you are, if you were an underdog, hypothetically, because I got a friend in this situation, you're an underdog. You mm -hmm. have Joshua Palmer on your roster. Mm -hmm. You have Rashi Rice on your roster. Mm -hmm. And you need the maximum potential. So, Who is that? Well, I would say it's Rushy Rice. And your opponent has Patrick Mahomes. And that's where I would say it's not Rushy Rice. Because for you, you're not going to make... Me? <laughs> for for you, because uh, because your opponent has Patrick Mahomes, you're not looking to negate and stay with him. You're looking for a swing, and you're hoping that Mahomes has a dud and Palmer has a, uh, you know, a good game. Whereas if Rushy Rice has a good game, you're, you're not catching up because Mahomes is getting those points. Too. I'll let my friend know. Okay, yeah, you let him know. But uh, Josh Palmer, I mean, it, for all of the targets and opportunities, it's been real pedestrian fantasy outputs, which is kind of disappointing. I am excited about Rashi Rice moving forward. Me too. Uh, in, in, in general, I think he's actually a really good start this week. Um, you know, he's been – he's got two different touchdowns on the season – and he's got two more where he was, you know, a yard away from a touchdown. They use him in that area of the field. I wish they used him more. I was going to say, do you think that they're ever going to – I mean, his snap counts have peaked at 51 and 49. Um, you know, despite having the good week against Minnesota, it was only 30%. I mean, do you do you foresee any scenario where he's a 70 80% snap guy? I probably don't. Uh, the way that Andy Reid has run this offense without Tyree Kill – is just packages. He's just got a bunch of different packages for different players, and when they are at practice, they're running those things. I mean, it can it can happen, and it can change with, like, MVS goes down, right? MVS is, like, the only yeah. guy who's on the field a ton, and now you've got to shuffle things around. Uh, but I do expect more and more times for Rushy Rice's number to get called, for them to put plays designed for him, and his value seems to be in the area of the field that is good for fantasy. So I, I'm and, and the matchup is fantastic. Now you did send me a counteroffer to reacquire Rashi Rice. I sure did because and I believe in him. The compensation was not sufficient. What was it? Nothing. That's right. You tried I, to get me to give you him. I asked for him, um, but I did not have the opportunity to say please. And so now, Andy, please give me him back. I didn't mean to drop him. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Okay, I tried. Miami, Sunday Night Football. The Dolphins, 5-1, and one, taking on the 5-1 and one Philadelphia Eagles. This is a great game. It's the matchup of the week. The DK Sportsbook line here, Philly minus 2.5. The over-under is 51.5. Mm. Who do you have in this game? It's been tough. Yeah. I I went with Miami. Really? I in went our, Eagles. In our picks. And I look, I don't – you know, Miami's had one big challenge this year where they went on the road to Buffalo and they got destroyed. Yeah. The, the only reason I really went with them in this one is because the Eagles' offense has looked uh, scattered at times. and, and, and you're Their coming defense up. has not looked great either. No, I mean, right now, for those tracking at home, when you see Philadelphia as the opponent for your fantasy player, you've often thought, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. But if you're a quarterback right now or a wide receiver, you should be saying, congratulations. Like, Tua, the matchup for him, the over-under – both wide receivers with Waddle and, and Hill. I mean, this could be a very big game. Philly's strength is their D-line. They're still great at stopping the run. And I do think by the end of this season, they will get back to being a great defense. But they have dealt with so many injuries to their safeties, their cornerbacks. They're really kind of more of a skeleton crew than they've been in the past right now. And that's why, you know, you could throw on them. And so if you could throw on them and you've got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. And potentially a big need to throw the ball a lot. Yeah, I mean, this this is – come on, don't disappoint. And then, uh, you know, Mostert has a tougher matchup, but he has been catching the ball. Jeff Wilson should be back. I think you start Raheem Mostert because, of course. And everyone else I would I would much, much, much rather take a wait-and-see approach on Like them. Jeff Wilson. And, yes. Yeah. But if I had to guess, I think Jeff Wilson will be the next man up. Any worries about Devontae Smith uh, in light of the limited practice hamstring, or yeah, are you just playing it? No, I mean, you're you're worried because of the hamstring, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, if he goes out there and runs and re-aggravates it, you just go, well, shucks. I mean, you could bench him, but can you really bench a wide receiver in this week, in this matchup? with? What about, like, Josh Palmer? 
No, you, you would never play a Josh Palmer over the chance to have a big blow-up week for Devonta Smith. I wouldn't. Yeah, I can see that. It's been a rough few weeks for Devontae Smith, but if you don't keep playing him, you're not going to get the good ones. Yeah, I mean, it, you put it like this. like Joshua Palmer's probably getting around seven half PPR fantasy points or something, seven and a half, something like that. If Devonta Smith, Devontae Smith goes out and g gets a goose, you're losing those points, and you his floor is zero. Yeah. But the ceilings of these guys, when, when Devontae Smith— 30 points or, or, or 11. Exactly. 30 points or 11. So now you're you're leaving 20 points on your bench so you can have a seven-point safer floor. And and that's only if it's a full goose. So, no, Devontae Smith should be in your lineup. I can tell I'm going to go back and forth between Rashi Rice and Josh Palmer all weekend. Yeah. I, I There's something to be said about the potential to nullify the Mahomes numbers. Sure. I mean, it depends on the rest of your roster. Yeah, it's a tough I, one. It is, it is a strange and weird thing. And I, I wish people had a little bit more context of that advice because um, you're going up against a juggernaut, a, a real super team that looks unbeatable. So I think, you know, in general, like I would start Rushy Rice over Joshua Palmer in 99 out of 100 leagues. More context. I have Isaiah Pacheco. Right. So, so I'm also hoping for a running game. Yeah, I mean, it, if if the rushing touchdowns come and Mahomes has a bad game, that's your – path to victory but if, if that happens well, but you just said the whole thing about like josh palmer if you don't you, you, seven points you're giving up yeah but but rushy rice's ceiling is not 30 points in this game well it could be could it be 20 I probably doubt not I doubt probably it. not yeah i have craig reynolds any option there <laughs> yeah i would i would just make a trade and get a better player why don't you do that i could do that yeah, yeah i thank you jason you're welcome i look forward to your text later uh the 49ers are 5 and 1, the Vikings are 2 and 4. Monday night football. The last two games of the week are kind of fun. Yeah. Um you last know, 3. Yeah, the uh the the 49ers coming off their first loss of the season. You know, Brock Purdy gets a uh get right game potentially here with the you know, the Vikings defense is not something to be afraid of. Uh we're doing the countdown on McCaffrey. Now he was a full did not practice on Thursday. mm mm Mhm feel like that's kind of a big deal but they'd play monday yeah today is a day to watch right yes today is the day so you would you would have really kind of expected people get wednesdays off all the time the veteran day of rest this is their wednesday as far as the practice schedule for a monday night football game so i'm not letting that dictate anything yet but today's practice if he's full dnp today then you start going all right i need to um, make preparations to have a player pivot in this game so that I can hold on to Elijah Mitchell, leave him in my flex, wait it out, and hope that or, – or Jordan Mason, if that's who you believe is the guy. I'm on the Elijah Mitchell side. Um, so who are the who are those options? Who Because if, if someone has Elijah Mitchell or Jordan Mason, because this is the Monday Night Football game, they can't just plug them into their lineup and know. So they have to have another pivot option in case Christian McCaffrey's active. Is that Jawan Jennings? No, it's Elijah. Elijah Mitchell's playing either way. If you're going to wait that out, really? Yeah, so Elijah Mitchell as the second option in a game like this. It could be a blowout where, where like McCaffrey's hurting, so they need to they need to put some load on someone else. Like Mason, you can't start at all if McCaffrey's healthy. But I would I'm fine playing Mitchell. Okay. I mean, we're talking about like Jaleel McLaughlin alongside Javante Williams. Or some of these like uh, peripheral runners, like I think Mitch. This is the game Mitchell. He's practicing. Last week he had no practice, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my opinion. Like okay. I'm not playing Juwan Jennings over Mitchell, even with McCaffrey active. I guess that is the that's the answer. But we're watching for Debo as well. I mean, Debo is it was they did not practice. Both players are they were optimistic about, but you know this is one of those things where the injury blitz podcast, which comes out later this afternoon after practice reports, is going to be a big deal. And if you want to listen into to that, because you're in this situation, join thefoot.com. Matthew Betts, our, our injury expert, is going to talk more about those injuries. Ayuk is obviously a lock. Purdy's a stream. Uh, you know, Kittle, just close your eyes, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just you, you hope. You we've, hope so. We've talked about this. Um, it's always the same advice for Kittle. It's always start him because he is going to have monstrous product, productive games. But his floor is lower than most other 
tight ends out there. Even his, his floor is lower than middling tight ends you wouldn't play in fantasy. It's so weird. It's it, because it, he's it, such a great blocker, and, they, and Kyle Shanahan is a schemer. He looks at a matchup and he says, this is how we're running our offense today. And so that's why he's so involved in the passing game in some games. Because they go, this is where I want to exploit it. This is how I want to use Kittle in this game. And then in other games, they're going, oh, you know, right now they've got, uh, they're, they're dealing with their left tackle being injured. So maybe Kittle is just a complete offensive lineman in this game. And the entire game is just used to protect Brock Purdy to throw the ball to Brandon Ayuka a million times. Yeah, you laid it out very clearly. I mean, that is the truth of the situation. And Kittle's no longer the the, the peak of his career where where you have to force the ball to him a few more times and the consistency's there. Yeah, and, and my advice was earlier this year and will continue to be, I mean, I didn't draft Kittle anywhere because, you know, I, I don't want that inconsistency. But if you've got him, get that big game because it will come again. I mean, he'll have a monstrous 20-point game in the next three weeks when it happens you trade him you trade high on that because I, I mean that's what i would do i just don't like having him kirk cousins in prime time ha has a 36 percent career win percentage and i don't think it's going up in this one being heavy underdogs in a quickly lost season at home he is averaging 332 passing yards but the matchup is not good 49ers defense has the most interceptions in the league um that that kind of puts you in a real rough position, in my opinion, with the Addison Osborne starts. Like you know, they're the guys, but like the ride, the ride was real bumpy last week for KJ Osborne, or I'm sorry, for Addison. Like he he was three for twenty eight on the day. Yeah, and so and they needed him. And he, and he was out there, eighty six percent of snaps. You just need to know, like his floor is is probably like two fantasy points in this game. Yeah, in in a matchup against the San Francisco Forty ers who will just be in Kirk's face all day. His floor is low, but I still believe in the talent for sure of Jordan Addison. He's got a touchdown in four of six games. Um, they need him desperately in this matchup, and as a rookie, he will continue to progress. He'll progress in talent. He'll progress in scheme fit. He'll progress within the, the offense and the designs for him. So, you know, I, I, I would still start Addison – ahead of KJ Osborne this week I see them pretty similar as far as like bad floors for both Osborne or Gabe the babe uh Gabe okay Hawkinson you play him for sure okay Deshaun Watson update for you uh throwing again on Friday gonna got almost all of the quarterback reps and um so we think he'll be back out there and then more confirmation that Gibbs looks to get the load at least out of the uh, reporters there. Just so you know, Jason, I may okay. or may not have glanced at the, uh, you know, last year we had some injuries in Los Angeles. Right? I mean, the, the yeah. Mike Williams. Joshua Palmer scored three touchdowns on the year. Do you know what team he scored all three against? Oh, was it the Chargers? Or was it Chiefs. the Chiefs? Oh, man. In fact, he scored in both of their matchups. Do you know what his highest fantasy output of the year last year was? It's 28 and a half fantasy what? points. What? Two touchdowns. I do not remember two that. Two touchdowns game. against the Kansas City the Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. So you're playing Palmer. I'm going to play Palmer. All right. Yeah. We got there. We got to the answer. The, the whole point of the show is. <laughs> All right. Let's out wrap now. the show up. Yeah. Thanks, okay. everyone. No, Folk I'm sorry, a... Jason. I think you will really, really enjoy this next segment. Okay. Fantasy Face Off, presented by DraftKings. Don't make your lineups on a Wednesday. We are six weeks into the season. And, uh, Jason, you have three first-place finishes. Yes, I do. Andy, you have three first-place finishes. That is correct. And Mike has five second-place finishes. So this past week, you made an early lineup. Your family was going out of town. Mm -hmm. I, I will, you know, I'll stress that, uh, you know, it might not have mattered, but maybe it would have. You never know. Uh, you could have updated I, it. I, we did ask you to. <laughs> I was uh, busy, and I forgot. I meant to update it. I had DeMarcado in my lineup. He wasn't the only reason, but I think I was going to make an entirely new lineup. Yeah, that would have been great. And I forgot. Yeah. And then I see the Slack message of you guys in this segment talking, and I go, oh, shoot, <laughs> I forgot to make a new lineup. Well, the uh, the end result for that is this. Wheel of shame all right let's 
see what you got. It was a new wheel. Yeah, we got a new wheel. You can you can spin it, and then we'll see what Fancy. see what you end up on. You see uh, cowboy or silly wabbit or oh, what is that one? Uh, it says bad luck Chuck. Bad luck Chuck. Oh no, that's a good nickname for you. I think. Uh, Oh, have I been I think injured? You've been injured like all of your players this year. There's a little neck brace for you, Jason. We got to get that uh, neck secure. Get you prepped up for the weekend. I mean, all your players are injured. You should probably. Mm. Ooh, that's just bare. That just barely I think, I think, fits. I think it goes the other way. Okay, yeah, it goes the other way, and uh, I want you to protect your face. Well, thank so we got you, you a little fa face oh, guard. Very nice. And uh, you're gonna have to take the glasses off for that one. So uh, hopefully you can still. Still read. Well, maybe he's going to put them on over the glasses. Yep. No, he's got them safe. Okay. Well, then, it hurts, can you, though. Can you protect your... Uh, oh, yeah. Can you go ahead and put your arm in a sling there? For sure. Um, But, Jason, I mean, it's perfect timing because you picked up Fryermuth, and he's hurt already. So, a little bad luck Chuck <laughs> today. Yeah, and it makes complete sense because um, <laughs> my lineup last week had... Uh, had <laughs> you look straight up injured. I, I mean, feel, that's... I feel injured in this, and I think when when we're done with the show and I take it off, I yeah. will have had new injuries. <laughs> you will have some marks. Uh, let's yeah. jump in. I mean, let's give our lineups for this week. Uh, and and Mike did get his lineup submitted this morning. Brooks will be reading his lineup. Uh, Jason, do you want to go first with your quarterback? Sure. I'm going to go hopeful um, that the touchdowns are passed in. In your almost upset by Matthew Stafford. Okay. Um, you know. Yeah, he does have a little Kurt Rambis vibe going. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I've got Matthew Stafford as my quarterback. How I, much is he? He's six thousand, I believe. I spent six thousand as well. Oh no! But I spent it on Geno Smith. Uh, see, I went back and forth. It was yeah. actually cheaper. I think I think Stafford was a little bit more. Okay. Well, Geno is six thousand, and I picked him up against Arizona. Mike, who's Mike's? Mike's got Geno. Gino, all Dang right. Gum it. Well, that's all right. Now look. I'm pivoting. Oh, Matthew Stafford, sixty five hundred. Yeah, well, it's too late for that. Yeah. Uh, your running backs. I mean, I, this is where I kept the integrity. I didn't. I didn't make a pivot, but I really should have. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I do have Kenneth Walker, seven thousand. He's in there. So this is really, really important for my lineup. If you guys have Gino, and I've got Kenneth Walker, I need early rushing touchdowns, baby. And I've got Josh Jacobs. At seventy four hundred against Chicago, you spent seven thousand and seventy four hundred. I did. This is where my money went. You are a smart person because I have Josh Jacobs mm -hmm. at seventy four hundred. So I thought that would be my counterbalance to your Kenneth Walker. Now I did go with Isaiah Pacheco at sixty one hundred for my other running back. I liked the price start of the week for Mike. Who does Mike have at running back? Mike has Josh Jacobs at seventy four hundred. Wow. Okay. And Kenneth Walker. Oh no. Oh, Mike and I did it again. I'm in deep trouble because of that <laughs> that Walker situation. Um, At wide receiver, the are you, how much pain are you in? Uh, this is uh, super uncomfortable. Like, yeah, is it uh, because glasses your glasses are on? Are pushed into my skull. You should have taken them off. But then I can't see. Well, that day, yeah. So um, I'm look. I, or put I, them on over. To, I don't. Know <laughs> yeah, that, that probably wouldn't work. work. Um, all right. So the reason I have Matthew Stafford is because I have Cooper Cup. So I am. I paid up for a couple of stars. I went stars and scrubs. Ninety five hundred for Cooper Cup. I also in that Seattle game have your start of the week, Marquise Hollywood Brown. Uh, he is very affordable at fifty three hundred. And the aforementioned Joshua Palmer, who <sighs> you are going to be starting, is my third. How wide much receiver. is Palmer? Palmer is forty eight hundred. Shoot. Well, I went with Cooper Cup. Nice. Not Cooper Cup at ninety five hundred. I also went with. Devontae Adams. I went with Devontae Adams at 8,200. And I went with the player I was teasing earlier in the show. My stack with Geno <laughs> Smith is 3,900 buckaroos, Jackson, Smith, and Jigba on the breakout game. Yeah, I knew I smelled something there. You're All right, right, who's Mike have? Mike's got Cooper Cup in there, as well as Zay Flowers and Wandale Robinson. All right, uh, Jason, your tight end flex and defense uh luke musgrave in that matchup against van joseph's defense uh we've got wandale robinson in my flex he's only 3800 so so affordable you got him too um and then i have the chiefs defense even though they're playing against the los angeles chargers it was all i could afford with those other studs up top and i'm just believing that the chiefs defense is is good 
I have the Chiefs defense and Wandale as well. Okay. My tight end, you went with Musgrave. I went with the uh, – I had to go a little cheaper getting Adams into my lineup. I went with Trey McBride. I'm going to hope that they get the ball to him. He finally outsnapped Mr. Zach Ertz. Close us out, Brooks. He was Mike's final three. All right. Mike's got Marquise Hollywood Brown in the flex, uh-huh. Michael Mayer at tight end, mm-hmm. and also the Chiefs defense. Okay. Yeah, I thought about Mayer. I just didn't want to run the Jacobs Adams Mayer triple stack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, this one should be interesting. It feels a lot like I win or I lose. I think that is true every week. Yeah, for us it has been. It has I mean, been. we have three wins each, and uh, and three losses. I bet you, oh, Mike, no. I bet you, Michael be two. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, all right, that was Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code Ballers to get two hundred dollars in free bets instantly. When you place a $5 bet on any football game as code BALLERS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Jason, bad luck Chuck himself. It has been the your story this year. Oh, man. I mean. Your players are not healthy. They are not healthy, and it's, it's all of them. So yeah. watch out, Jalen Hurts. All right. Good luck this weekend, everybody. Like I said, the Injury Blitz podcast this afternoon at jointhefoot.com. You can join Mike on Sunday Live, ballerslive.com, Sunday morning. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.